this lecture introduces an overview of vector spaces. But first, let's talk about Euclidean vector spaces Rn, because in this class we'll be focusing a lot more, a lot of materials in learning uh, matrix algebra in Euclidean vector spaces. All right. By the definition, the Euclidean vector spaces consists of all possible n-dimensional real values, column vectors with the operations of vector addition and scalar multiplication. Here are some properties of Euclidean vectors uh, spaces. First, well, let's consider a, a Euclidean vector space R square. So R square is a two dimensional real value, um, dimensional real value vector space. And you can think of R square as just a x, y coordinate, okay? When you have x, x axis or the x value is one dimension and the y axis is the second dimension of R square. So now, if you pick a two non-zero vectors in R square and a vector can be representing using a column vector, and the column vectors that have, if since you are in R square, so in this column vector, you have two entries, first entry and the second entry, okay? Um, in R square, we can think vectors as a geometric object with a magnitude. But look at an example here. So I pick an, a vector in R square, two, one. And this is good. This is an object, right? And you have the magnitude, which is the length of this um, segment here. And you can determine the length of this segment or the magnitude of a vector in R square using Pythagorean theorem, which means the magnitude of the X is denoted by uh, double bar X double bar equals to square root of X one square. Uh, plus x2 square. So you can define, uh, you can find the length of this vector. Also, a vector has a um, direction. So the directions of a vector is associated with the line segment in the plane, in the R2 plane, uh, from an initial point to a terminal point. So this vector right here has an initial point at zero, zero, and the terminal point at one, two, okay? So if you wanna add the two vectors together, let's say I have another vector, uh, this is u and this is v. If you wanna add u and v together, you just, I just add the u and v, u and v together. Well, I will just add the first coordinate of the two vectors and then the se second coordinate or the second entry of the two vectors together. All right, um, let's say if I want to add u plus v, I would have a vector so is negative 5 and 0. u plus v would have negative 1 and 2. So that means if you add this vectors here, this v vectors here is the sum of the two vector u and v to get v. And if you take two minus three, you get negative one. You take one minus i uh, one plus one, you get two. So that's how you add the two vectors together. What about when you want to multiply a vector by a scalar alpha. And in this case, you just need to multiply alpha to each of the entry to get alpha times x. In this case, I let u be the vector that I'm looking at. And if I want to find uh, another vector uh, is defined by taking the vector u multiplied by two, I have w equals to two u. And you can see that u and w have the same directions. The magnitude of W is twice as the magnitude of U, right? By the definition, um, they have the same initial point, but uh, their terminal points are different. Okay, so then you can generalize um, these properties from R two to um, 
any vectors in uh, Rn. So if you consider a uh, Euclidean vector space Rn, then you will have in each of the vector in Rn, you would have n entries, right? And then if you want to multiply a scalar to a vector, you just multiply the scalar to every single entry. If you want to add two vectors in Rn, you're just adding the corresponding entries together. So that's an, this is an example of you know uh, vector space in R two. Okay, R two is a two dimensional space, um, and then you can visualize it using the plane, just a two dimensional plane x y coordinate. Now, if um, so, if you have a set of vectors, and and that set of vectors, let me call V, is a set of vectors. And V is a vector space. If you pick a three random vectors, X, Y, Z in V, and the two uh, arbitrary scalars. So V will be a vector space if the following axioms are satisfied. So we have A axioms. And if a, a, these eight axioms are satisfied, uh, then V is a vector space. At first, if you plus take x plus y is the same as y plus x. If you have three vectors and you can group them in a different order, uh, they'll be equal. If you um, take a vector and plus to a zero vector, then um, it will be just itself, right? If you um, take a vector and you add to the opposite vector, you get to zero vector. If you multiply a scalar to a sum of x plus y, you can distribute scalar alpha into alpha x plus alpha y. If you have a sum of the two arbitrary of the two scalars, alpha and beta, you multiply it to a vector x, then again you can distribute alpha and beta to vector x. Uh, similarly, if you multiply two scalars, alpha and beta to a vector x, you can rearrange the order without changing the value. If you, lastly, if you multiply one, vector one to, uh, if you multiply one to a vector x, you get x. Um, okay. Well, uh, this is the, the def if, if a set of vectors is a vector space, then um, that set of vectors has to satisfy all of this axiom. But the two um, important properties of vector space is called the closure properties of the two operations. So there's two components of the, de of the definitions is the closure properties. And this closure of properties can be summarized as the following two closure properties, C1 and C2. So say, if you pick a, an arbitrary, you pick a random vector in V and an arbitrary scalar, then scalar alpha times X is gonna be in the same is going to be just another vector in V. So that's the first. Um, that's the first closure property. It's called scalar multiplication, right? You pick a vector in V and you multiply that vector to a scalar. The result will be a vector in V. It's the same in V. Okay, that's the first, it's the first closure properties. Again, it's called scalar multiplication. And closure under addition means if you pick any two vectors in V, any random vectors in V, if you add them together, the result, the sum vector is still another vector in V, which is the same set V. So this is the closure under uh, additions. C2 is closure under additions and C1 is closure under multiplication. Well, let's illustrate the importance of this closure of properties. 
But let's consider a set of vectors. So this set of vectors is a W, right? W is a set of vectors that includes all the vectors in R2 because we have two entries here. So the set of vectors in R2, uh, where the first entry can be any value, A in R, the real value, but the second entry has to be one. So this is the condition uh, for a vector to be in this set. The second entry has to be one. So you can think of uh, W as a set of vectors in R2 um, in this uh, vector form. So the question is, is W a vector space? And the answer is no. It's not a vector space because if we pick a two random vectors, let's say 2, 1 and negative 3, 1. So these two vectors here are the two vectors that we pick. And you can see that these two vectors here satisfy the condition to be in the set w right because the second entry of these two vectors are uh, one okay but when we add these two vectors together we get another vector which is negative one and two and negative one and two the sum of the two vector u and v has the second entries of two which is which violates the condition for vectors to be in the set w so that's why this set of vector w is not a vector space because the uh, uh, the closure properties closure under the additions is not satisfied here when you add the two vectors in the in this set and the result is a vector that is not in this set you can conclude that the set of vectors w here is not a vector space and you can see that here right so u and uh, u and v are the two vectors in w um, and you see that those are the vectors when um, the second entry by the y values has to be one but if you look at B as the sum of U and V, the Y value is two. It's not, it's not, it does not belong into uh, the set W. So that's why W is not a vector space. All right, so just keep in mind that even though that if you're given a set, uh, and you, if you can prove that the set of vectors satisfy um, the two closure properties, C1 and C2, then you can conclude that the set is a vector space. But um, in, in fact, you must check, right? In, usually you have to check to see if this eight axioms also satisfy in order to determine whether a set of vector u is a vector space okay. but um, in this class if if i ask you to show that if a set of vectors is a vector space or not you just need to show that that if the set of vectors satisfy the two um, closure properties c1 and c2 then you can conclude that that set is a vector space. Most of the time, uh, if a set of vector space satisfy this, this two closure properties, it will satisfy these eight axioms. Well, there's more vector space, uh, more vector spaces uh, that you maybe will be uh, encounter in this class or maybe in the next uh, level class of linear algebra. So they are a vector space, uh, R, n by n, is a set of R, n by n matrices with real entries. So instead of a vector in, in, in this vector space is a matrix, not just a column vector, right? And then you have a vector space C from A to B is a set of R real values functions that define n continuous on the closed interval from A to B. This is C A to B. It's all functions that are defined and continuous on the closed interval from A to B. 
And another example of vector space is a vector space PN. PN is a set of all the polynomials of degree less than n. Okay. All the polynomials, and you know, um, polynomials are real functions, right? Define continuous. But uh, this vector space here contains other polynomials of degree that is less than n. And then there's some additional um, properties of vector spaces here. Well, the additional properties is if you uh, take zero and you multiply to a, a vector in a vector space and you get a zero vector. The second property is, is if you add the two vectors and it gives you a zero vector, that implies that x is the same as negative of y or y is uh, equals to the negative of x. It's called the additive inverse of x. And the additive inverse of x is unique. And the last property is if you multiply negative one to a vector, then you get negative x. And again, negative x is the additive inverse of x. All right, so we uh, talked about the definitions of vector spaces, some examples of vector spaces, and how we would define whether a set of vector is a vector space or not using the two closure properties of two operations. So the first closure of properties is the closure property under scalar multiplication C1. And the second closure property is the closure property under, under um, addition. Okay. So once you show these two closure properties are true, then you show that the set of vector is a vector space. If one of the closure properties is violated or is not true, then the set of vector is not a vector space. 